You are live. I'm live. Life is life. So, uh, can we start? Teresa, would you like to say something or just a should start? Cold start. Cold start. Go ahead, start, Adam. Okay, hello. Uh, welcome to started. the third, actually, J4K conference. The first one was like top secret one. <laughs> the next one was a virtual one. And it was my worst experience because I had to pre-record the session and I had no idea how, how to do it. I never pre-recorded anything. So uh, now I'm really glad I'm live with you today. And uh, what I would like to do today to talk about uh, actually the future of uh, Java runtimes, not on the, on the cloud. So um, my observations, what happens uh, right now and what we actually use in projects. So I still like Java and really enjoy it. And I started with Java's JDK 1.0. And then from then, I just, you know, enjoy programming. So there is no, no change in my, uh, <laughs> in my career. And um, now, um, if you're interested, um, there are some online courses, um, maybe AHEX FM podcast, you will see in a second. It's relevant for the show. And there are some online workshops. So um, if there are any questions left, we have only have one half an hour, not one hour, only half an hour. And there's an AHEX TV next month. So you can ask me whatever you like, and then we have almost open-ended show. I would try to keep it for one hour, but um, yeah. Now, uh, there are some online courses um, and some more courses and some uh, Java workshops, and then start with the content. And um, so um, what, what happened 10 years ago, and um, what, uh, not 10 years ago, to be precise, eight years ago, so this is my blog post from 2013, so what I, what I did uh, back then, I noticed that in projects, we started you know, to ship one application server with one war, there was one unit. And the application servers were small. So for me, there was no reason to optimize. I said, okay, works fine. So uh, everyone was happy. Uh, we solved you know, the Docker layering and it worked just great. And um, how this felt? So um, it felt like this, let's see. Okay, I'm in the right folder. Set up uh, Jakarta E project and now call it uh, JK for Jakarta. And I think I even did it last year, but just a reminder, now I package the application and what happens is we get, uh, we get hopefully a war, uh, Maven package, package. So there's interestingly an issue with, uh, oh, uh, JK, yeah, Maven package, package. And now it should package. Now it, it is wrong, wrong folder, sorry, live session. And now uh, inside the package, there is a war. And uh, the war is 4K, why? Because there is no runtime inside. It was clearly separated and I still enjoyed and still enjoy the idea that you should cleanly separate, you should cleanly separate between the uh, runtime and the application. So there's nothing new. I, 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 I delivered several sessions about that. Now. So, and if you would, let's say, start Payara. So let's uh, go for that, Payara. And uh, yeah, J11, Payara. And here, what I could do is I could just start a what? What is H? This is also a um, website with the same URI. And if I start it, it will deploy to all available servers on my machine, so Tommy, Open Liberty, and stuff like that. And the Payara picks it up hopefully, and then I can go to localhost 8080 slash JK slash slash resources slash ping, hopefully, and I get the ping back from Payara. So if something changes here, um, and uh, let's say I would like to change the, um, the ping here, to let's say J for K eight for Kubernetes. So now we have this and uh, let's see whether, yeah, it, it was already deployed actually. And uh, we should be able to run it again. As you can see, it was deployed. So it was fast and um, I really enjoyed the experience even now. So the problem is, uh, it is always the case. So we always had one Payara, one war, and one app. And uh, now is the question, do uh, application servers have actually, uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, I, I created this, this slide before the show. Do application servers actually have a bright future? So it is like uh, the grammar is not, not perfect, but <laughs> at least understandable. 
And um, now let's take a look on that. So first idea, the uh, something like Payara, Whitefly, WebSphere, they, what they what they try to do is to, to try they try you know to uh, to to be highly available the highly available with clustering. So clustering meant you know the one application was like logical unit spread across nodes. So this was the idea behind behind that. So now, if you if you think about this uh, on Docker container, it, it works a little bit differently. So what you usually will have in microservices nodes and these nodes are started and you have a kind of load balancer which balances the load between the nodes. So um, what it means is, it is the entire application server could be questionable. You say, okay, there's too much overhead. We don't need it anymore. Or we can, we can change the way or change the, uh, the meaning of clustering. And what I would like to do is, um, now I would like to show you the um, Payara Cloud. And um, uh, or, or what Payara Cloud is, a Payara Cloud is a um, so a Payara Cloud is a, uh, a, a Payara application server which uses Kubernetes as a cluster. So this is Kubernetes operator, and um, I, I ask myself um, as a, so long story short. And one of the Java ones, I think it was around two thousand and seven. Sun introduced uh, Sun Grid. I remember this right now. It was you know the predecessor of clouds. And what they did is you had to package the application as a zip and, and push it to the cloud and hope it is unzipped properly. And then you had the application in the cloud or in the sun grid. And I asked myself why they are doing this. They have already wars that so they could ship war in the cloud and, and, see the, and, and, and then I wouldn't care about the servers, about the zipping. And I never tried actually the sun grid cloud because I was too lazy to create a custom zip. So now, um, now it's a little bit different here. So what I would like to do is, wait a sec, there should be here. Um, what I did, I already uh, subscribed to the Payara Cloud and I created a namespace in advance. I cr cr could create another one, let's say create names namespace, which is actually Kubernetes namespace. And uh, let's try that. And uh, the project is J4K, J4K, and the stage is, let's say, dev. And create the namespace. And what I got is like a completely new namespace. Now I can upload the application and for that I will just oh this was actually good so for that um, I need to choose a file and uh, what I would like to do is to choose the file which was already created and already uh, deployed locally so let's go here and say okay uh, this is my JK JK war and pick that open that and upload that. So um, hopefully it works. This is a uh, this is a preview actually. What I got so this is like a, a, a beta uh, access. So I ask for them. Can I can I can I show it at the conference? And they say okay. But you know the user interface is not done yet. And um, yeah, but you get the idea. So what happened now? My application was uploaded uh, to the Payara cluster, and Payara starts for me manages Kubernetes. So this was actually the idea 15 years ago became true. What this actually is, is like serverless servers, right? I don't care about the Payara, I just care about the war, push it in the cloud and it runs. For me, it could be some kind of a future, why not? Why? Because um, if you have like say boring, uh, boring application with some CRUD and databases. So, I mean, if you if you take the application and, and just add it to the cloud, I, I don't see any, any any, any, any benefit except everything become, becomes more complex and even more expensive. With that, you're running on the cloud if this was the decision by management or whoever, and, uh, and you can just you know, keep it simple because all the plumbing happens by, behind the scenes and the plumbing can be significant. Not Kubernetes is the lesser problem, you know, all the VPCs and subnets and whatever you have to do, this is actually um, can be problematic. So now this was um, uploaded and as you can see, there is a configuration and we see that there is a microprofile config message enjoy. So this is uh, the configuration of the app. Export path is context root JK. App name is JK. And uh, yeah, and let's see. The only thing is, I guess this is the URI. Wait a sec, there are two URI, so I would just pick that one. Um, what you even get, you can even set up the, um, you can even set up uh, the custom DNS, DNA, DNS name and you can specify how big the node uh, has to be. So now, come back here, curl, and I hope it is pink. 
and uh no resources pink resources slash pink and this was the live deployment to um kubernetes using a a server which instead you know managing uh, the domains locally it do manages kubernetes for you an interesting idea so now um I really like the idea. Why? Because it's the exact opposite where everyone is going, you know, with the smallest and smaller runtimes, you can, you can go this route or go another route. Okay, now, next idea. So where are my slides? My slides are here. So um, do application have a server have a bright future? I don't know whether bright, but they have a future, obviously. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Whitefly or Open Liberty, uh, they approach uh, similar things because if you compare that, you know, to, uh, to 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 a blank vanilla cloud, it is hugely productive. In blank, um, so actually today I created a CI/CD pipeline. So the build alone on in the cloud was two and a half minutes, just just you know the build step without anything else. So um, now servers versus runtimes. Now I would like to leave the server, and and go towards runtimes. So um, what are next generation runtimes? I think. The journey started with uh, Micronode. And uh, I actually ignored Micronode. And why? You can you can uh, go to the podcast and there is, uh, by the way, Runtimes versus Server, there is a podcast episode with Bruno Borges where we had a conversation about that. So if you're interested, go down to, to that. And now about, um, about, oh, there is a podcast episode about the Pyra Cloud and there is a podcast episode about Micronode. And we also had a conversation why I actually always ignored Micronode. And the reason was Micronode shipped with proprietary APIs, which I was not ready you know, to invest time to learn something which it, it behaves like this or I already know. But Micronode, if you go to launch, um, change a little bit. So, And what is, was the idea of Micronode? Micronode said, okay, basically there's no reflection to save memory. And uh, a cold startup is very important. And I think Micronode and Quarkus were the first. So it's hard to tell what, what was uh, the first one. Uh, what I remember, I was on the, on the uh, DevOps conference and Graham Roche came after me. Um, no, it was he, he's, he, uh, he was before me and it was announced and there was a huge interest. So now what Micronode does is it uh, builds, it optimizes everything as, as, as much as possible at build time and not at runtime, so you get very fast startup times, but because everything is optimized in build time, it knows about the dependencies, so it can pass the dependencies to uh, to GraalVM and everything gets optimized. So this is the long story short on, about Micronaut. So what I uh, can do, I can use uh, Java, no idea about Gradle, so I use Maven, June is okay, and I would like to add some features. And now watch this, what I can add is Jax RS feature, which now it becomes a little bit more interesting for me, even uh, validation, and this is Hibernate validator, which basically means it's the um, bin validation. And what I know, um, the podcast is, is going to be to be published soon. They're already working on CDI Lite. So um, I would get, I would say like 60% of Jakarta E and MicroProfile goodness in Micronode, which I think is together with, with Quarkus and Helidon, the smallest you know, runtimes on earth, I would, I would argue. So now, um, done and now it's also interesting. What you can do, I can say, I would like to generate a project from curl, which is nice. So let's do this. And um, so now switch to my base folder and create micronote, um, micronote, and then do the curl. So, and what happened was I got the demo project here. So I can unzip the demo project, uh, unzip unzip demo so and now build that clean oh no clean package so now let's see what happens it should create a jar and we can start the jar so there are uh tests backed in and now uh um open this with visual studio code and micronode is absolutely opposite of payara this is why i like it and uh by the way micronode and quarkus so if I just open the um, resources, or sorry, the Java, what you can see is, um, so this is a Micronode application which launches Micronode, but what I could do, I could just create a um, hello resource, hello resource Java. And this comes now with plain JaxRS. It will look like the Pyra application, JaxRS um, hello 
And now let's create a hello uh, or a message. Otherwise, it's a little bit confusing. And now I can say return hello J4K, J4, 4, 4K conference, conference. So, uh, and uh, no, okay. So looks good. What I have to do is I have to tell uh, Micronaut run, I hope uh, the hello resource. Okay, now looks good. So now build Micronaut again, Maven package, and then we can hopefully run it. Okay, now switch to target and now run uh, demo 01 without the A. Uh, oh, there is no job. Yeah. So now uh, the application, uh, oh, uh, already in used, uh, kill Java. Now it should be no more used. Now Micronaut started in uh, 1.3 seconds, which is longer than usually. Yeah, today is, so it was 500 milliseconds usually. Yeah, oh, this is what I, what I, what I usually see. Uh, now, um, and let's test it, uh, curl localhost um, 8080 slash, and I think it was hello. Uh, no, uh, it was, uh, forgot actually. Yeah, it was hello, has to be hello. Strange, should work, it usually works, but, um, but um, what I actually wanted to show you, BCV first. What Micronaut comes with are a Fed jar with our 15, 15 max which is not a big deal because uh, usually you would use GraalVM to compile this thing to a, to a, to a, a, to a single image, what you, what you, um, to an executable image. But in this particular case, uh, you could also um, configure a Micronode to have a layered image, which I also consider a future because I don't like you know, to ship. Actually today I built an app, I think I shipped that 20 times to a cloud. And uh, so I don't like to ship 20 times 15 megs to the cloud, just the diff. And this is usually happens with the um, Docker layering. So um, now, um, now open that or yeah with BCV, which is which is a decompiler, and we have the demo one. So I can just open here. And the interesting part, if you take a look at the app, there would be no. Uh, no reflection. So this is just, uh, so first, where's the manifest MF? This is hard to see. Should be inside. Manifest MF. As you can see, there's just main class. So, uh, and the main class is com example, com example, and this is where, you know, the application happens. As you can see, you go here, lots of bytecode generated code. It uh, It's static, it's simple no reflection, no class loaders, fast start types, and small runtimes. So I think Micronode is can be as small as it could be if you, uh, you would just you know, take Java SE application and, 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 uh, and write an app, it will be as small as Micronode. Okay, next one is uh, Helidon. So Helidon, um, so interesting really, uh, Micronode is, um, is uh, so lots of companies uh, contributed to, to Micronode, so Oracle, Google, and lots of uh, personal uh, or personal, yeah, lots of, uh, how to call it, private contributors. And now uh, Halidon is also Oracle, but different department. But my understanding is that both departments like each other. So they are co co collaborating. So um, now let's start with Halidon. So what I would like to do is go to get started and uh, now pick the Maven archetype and uh, go to now uh, here, Halidon. So now let's create a project and the archetype is like a Maven wizard. So the group ID, I would like to use uh, IOJ4K. The artifact ID is going to be Helidon. So uh, let's go with Hell. So, uh, and then the package is IOJ4K as well. So let's do this as well, J, J Adam, you have about five minutes left. Oh, perfect. So if there are any questions, interrupt me. Otherwise, I will hack the five minutes. And um, 
So um, hell and then open that. And what you will see is this is already a micro profile application. What I appreciate in Helidon is they focus more on standards and they come with, uh, where is it uh, here? A single micro profile dependency and some you know additional specs, but this basically it. So now if I build Helidon, Maven, Maven uh, package the Helidon and I will have to kill, it is already killed, okay. So now what happens then? The application is built. If I go here and uh, look at the hell, you see it is 8K. So is how it's possible and the trick is because it is already layered. So the hell is here, but all the libraries are inside the lips. So now we have the layering from day one. So there's no more a fed jar rather than a layer jar or a slip jar or whatever you call it. And, um, and of course I can now launch the hell. And um, it started. It is um, also around the second and the interesting part in already ships with the entire micro profile spec. So now Helidon still uses um, reflection uh, at runtime, but um, they will share the CDI contributed by micronodes as soon. They will also be, you know, this is what I say the future. They will also, be, the behavior will be similar to, to micronode where reflection is replaced with annotation processors. So now, uh, last but not least, I just do the Quarkus last because uh, Quarkus, I speak about Quarkus uh, uh, on, on, on lots of uh, conferences. So, um, so if I just go here and say create, so it will create a Quarkus project. And hey, I said, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I gave you an early time. You actually have about 10 minutes left. So take your time and Quarkus. Oh, thank you. So uh, set the project group ID and the project group ID is going to be uh, J4K and the Quarkus is going to be, uh, or sorry, artifact ID is going to be uh, Quark and snapshot and this is okay, yes. Quark, so um, perfect. So uh, now build that and um, what what all of the modern runtimes have is uh, command line interface. So what Helidon ships with command line interface, which uh, is like a REPL. So it just watches the changes and deploys the changes and um, Micronode the same. And what Quarkus does, it comes with uh, the um, dev mode. And I would like to use it right now. And uh, so now it started on an every change. So this was a, uh, this is not fair. So what I will show, show you with Quarkus is Maven clean install. Yeah, I don't need tests. And then go to target. And you see that uh, the Quarkus is 4K and, um, and there is no lips, why? because Quarkus moved to, I think they call it fast jars. And the fast jars here, you see, we have nice separation between the, uh, the, the runner and there's the app and the lip. So there's the, the separation is even stricter. So I would say such a separation from day one uh, was always available by application servers, which is stunning. And now the modern runtimes also uh, provide this from day one. Uh, Quarkus, ships with micro profile or not. So you can pick and choose how much you would like to have from, from micro profile. And, um, and the idea is a little bit different to Helidon. So you, you will have to add all the extensions upfront to, to create uh, like a micro profile, almost compatible. So it is, I would say 95 compatible uh, runtime. Okay, if I run uh, Quarkus that way, jar Quarkus run, then uh, it starts almost immediately. It is as fast as um, as Micronode because you know the technology behind the scenes is is is, is very very similar. So um, now if I um, just take a look at the jar, so let's do that. BCD. You will find in the Quarkus case that where's my decompiler here in the Quarkus case that
there is a meta inf and there's a class path. So we, we know that IO Quarkus bootstrap runner Quarkus entry point is you know, the, the starter and these are the dependencies. So we have a clear separation between the, the application code and the infrastructure code. So um, what I would say is that the future for me uh, the, the of Java runtimes in the cloud is a fast startup or, or I would say runtime simplicity, no tricks at runtime, no reflection, you know, no class loaders, a very simple runtime, more complex builds because you know the, uh, the reflection has to be replaced with annotation processing or in extensions in Quarkus. And, and uh, why it is important? Because um, now the Java applications are so small with GraalVM that you can actually use them as a Lambda functions. And if you use them as a functions um, or uh, Azure functions or Lambda functions, they're different name or, or, or cloud functions from Oracle. But I think all the providers charge you per invocation length. So the longer the invocation, the more they will charge you. And the startup time is relevant. So for that, you can really save money. So for running on you know, uh, Kubernetes-like environment is less important. So you, can, you will pay you know, for the virtual machines anyway. But um, I would say uh, the, the, the future or the trend, I mean, and therefore the future is having you know, boring APIs like MicroProfile Jakarta E, uh, I mean, why to invent new things uh, combined with simple, fast runtimes. Thank you. Um, I think, Teresa, that uh, I'm almost over time, right? Um, no, actually, you have uh, three minutes until your Q&A. Um, so if you want to go ahead and continue, feel free to. I'll let you know okay. uh, once we hit the two minutes. Yep, I'll let you know once I hit, what, two minutes in before it's over? Uh Okay, then we can go to the uh, to the Q and A. Maybe there are some more more questions. Okay. And the first question so, is. <laughs> I am looking at the questions now. So, how is uh, how is Corcus uh, being used right now in production? How uh, in most cases I use Corcus in production. Uh, Corcus is used heavily in production in my projects. And we uh, usually go with uh, OpenJDK. Uh, this is whatever my clients have. And uh, there was no need for GraalVM deployments right now because Quarkus was not used a lot as a Lambda functions. So um, this is my answer. And if I would, uh, and, and in one project right now, we are investigating GraalVM because we would like to use Quarkus uh, on Lambda. And therefore GraalVM is reasonable. I have a question for you. Uh, what's your preference among Micronaut, Helicon, and Quarkus? Uh, my preference is unfair. It's Helidon or Quarkus. Uh, both are, uh, Helidon focuses more on runtime performance and Quarkus um, on startup performance. So they are both interesting, what I, both interesting tools. What I like about both is uh, both support MicroProfile fully from, from scratch and parts of Java E. And I'm a Jakarta E and MicroProfile developer. All my projects know already the libraries. So what it means is I can actually migrate whatever, migrate whatever application I built in the last 15 years to a newest and smallest runtime. And by the way, there was a conference called JDD in Poland. And uh, I, I uh, attended the conference, I don't know, uh, 2012. And I created application on stage. And, and there was a title like the future is now for Java 6. So if you like, uh, um, search it on YouTube. And what I did uh, last year, I picked the old applications and migrated this to the newest runtime and it worked. So um, what uh, Micronode, I try you know, to avoid a little bit right now because it, uh, it, it comes with proprietary APIs and I have no time <laughs> to learn something new without a reason because you know, JAXRS works fine, CDI works fine, so I should use uh, learn something else. But having said that, Micronode, if you would like to migrate from Spring uh, to uh, Micronode, which seems to be a trend, then um, uh, I would prefer Micronaut over Helidon, or I would prefer, if I had the problem, uh, I would uh, I would prefer Micronaut or Quarkus over Helidon because Quarkus comes with like Spring Boot or Spring compatibility layer, and uh, Micronaut is almost like you know uh, optimized Spring. Okay, your next question: Are you still using application servers in your projects? Yes, a funny thing is uh, some of my startups, I, uh, several years ago, I, uh, I remember once a startup is using uh, Whitefly 
and I showed them Quarkus and they say, okay, Whitefall is just fast enough. I have no interest in the migration. So actually a lot of projects because the recent application servers, Open Liberty, for instance, a great server, Tommy, uh, incredible server. So if if you are happy and you know, uh, this is a boring uh, applications, boring means, you know, it's not like uh, machine learning and whatever uh, included, then why you should move to something else? And um, and uh, application servers are surprisingly fast and 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 small, just watch my, watch my YouTube channel. You will see actually there are lots of sessions about that. And um, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. But uh, what I, um, why I, I'm, I'm, I'm working with Quarkus or I'm mentioning Quarkus, Micronaut and Helidon, because you know, if I start with application server in my project, I get exactly the same question, you know, what about are not application server sm small, uh, slow and, and bloated? So my answer is always, okay, then let's pick, you know, the smallest possible runtimes on earth. And this is a Micronode, Helidon and Quarkus. And then it's you no, know, um, for instance, Micronode and Helidon uh, or Quarkus, they're actually smaller than empty Tomcat. So um, then is the discussion is over and we can just focus on the solving problems and not discussing, you know, whether we can say five megs or not. Next question, please. If there are no questions, Teresa has to ask me something. Yes, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, how do you feel about Spring Boot, especially uh, Jafu and Kofu? Jafu and Kofu? Uh, I, am, uh, I never did a project in Spring Boot, so, uh, but uh, what I was told is that uh, Spring Boot is more dynamic and, uh, and it behaves differently to this what I saw today. This is what uh, the only you know, thing I can tell you. And uh, and uh, what I also help companies to migrate away from Spring Boot uh, because of memory. So I couldn't understand why they are doing this because, as I said, it's not a problem that you know uh, the, the application consumes a little bit more memory because. But they were really obsessed. So there was one migration from Spring Boot to Quarkus, and uh, but I mean Spring Boot is very popular. If you're happy with Spring Boot, just use Spring Boot. All right. Yeah, but. Two and a half minutes. Next question is, do you think the landscape would change once Spring Boot has uh, GraalVM support? Maybe. I mean, the landscape, I mean, Spring Boot is popular right now. And if they will support GraalVM, then it will be also popular. It's not like, you know, the popularity will decrease. But uh, what I see right now, Quarkus, for instance, and everyone knows Quarkus, at least in Germany. So if I go to a project like what do you do Quarkus okay set then then we can start is the discussion is over basically and um, Helidon is lesser known uh, but uh, in Oracle shops you get support you know if you migration from web logic to Helidon just is the way to go and Micronode is um, everybody knows Micronode as well I, I try to avoid it because uh, it is uh, it comes with proprietary APIs but uh, the runtime is still capable and uh, as I said if they will ship CDI light soon then it becomes even more interesting for my projects. Yeah. Next question, right, please. Next question. All the years you proposed to use Java E app server in full mode, is this still valid today? Or do you still uh, or do you still also shift to Quarkus? This is what I said. And um, the interesting part is let's say uh Quarkus, right? So if I'm here in the Quarkus case and I open the project. Then um, what I can do, so the project is basically empty. So you will see there is uh, one extension or two extensions. So, and uh, what I have to do is I have to say uh, Quarkus, uh, Quarkus add extension to a current project. And then what I have to, to do is I have to know, you know, I need, for instance, small array, whatever is small array, I have to J JSON web, t uh, J J J J